today's video, all I'm focusing on is debugging and fixing the issue I had with the D3, D11 swap chains at the end of last time so that releasing Windows will actually work in my D3, D11 layer. So most of this video is just going to go over some debug techniques I used and then show the solution I finally found. So there's not going to be a lot to it. It'll be a quick one, but we got to get this out of the way so that all of our stuff is working. So let's look into it. In the last video, I already did a pretty long session of debugging this. And in that session, I did all of the obvious stuff. Obvious stuff here meaning, you know, toying around with it, trying out several different uh, approaches to when to time the release, stepping over the line of code that's supposed to do the release to make sure that it's actually not, we don't actually see a decrease in the memory there the way we would expect if the memory leak is coming from the swap chain, uh, you know, isolating other things to make sure that they're not the leak. I did all of that stuff and I really was quite sure that the swap chain was causing a leak and that I was calling the release function like I'm supposed to and still getting the leak. So with all the basics out of the way, all that's left to do now is to bring out the big guns, try some debugging techniques that will take more effort, but that will help to increase the certainty we have uh, about all how all these details work until we find a solution. The first approach I take is to go track down example programs and see if they have this issue. Unfortunately, I can't actually find any example programs that allocate and release swap chains to test for leaks. I can find programs uh, out there that try to release a swap chain. And when I take those programs and do anything to modify them to test multiple swap chains being allocated and released, I end up finding that they're having the same issue that I'm having. Nowhere on the internet did I get lucky enough to stumble into an example that demonstrates a swap chain actually getting released. Next, I try to take an example of the bug. So I take my D3D11 example and I make a copy of it. And then I start whittling it down. The point here is to shrink the example code down as much as possible to isolate the bug into a tiny piece of code. And by taking this approach, I'm going to end up finding one of two things. Either somewhere along the way, I'm going to remove something, and at each step I'm removing things, I'm also testing again to see if the leak is still there. And if I do that test and find out that the leak has gone, then I have just uncovered an important difference between the way I'm doing things and a way that I could be doing things that doesn't have the leak. So this is sort of, in a way, uh, I'm trying to find one single change that fixes the issue. Unfortunately, as I'm whittling this particular thing down, I get the other possibility, which is I get down to the smallest possible example that still accomplishes the goal of creating a swap chain and trying to release it, and I'm still getting the leak. So even when I take out all the other details, none of them were confounding it. It really was just the case that simply releasing the swap chain after doing the minimal amount of work to create it doesn't actually release it. So with that, I now have an example program that I can share online and ask for help, and I can test out people's suggested solutions in an extremely small example that I know still has the issue and doesn't have any other confounding details. At this point, I've done enough work that I think doing any more work on my own is just going to be a waste of effort. So I turn to the internet and ask for help. In this case, I decide that I'm going to go to the Handmade Network and ask on their Discord. They have a spot specifically for programming help where I created a thread and just said, hey, I'm trying to free a swap chain. I'm calling the release function on the swap chain object. And nevertheless, my memory is spiking up and up and up and it's never going back down. What am I doing wrong? And it turns out that there is actually a spot in the documentation that explains this, but it is unfortunately not tied anywhere to the swap chain object itself or to the swap chain release method or anything like that. There's no obvious way to get from searching around about swap chains and memory leaks to this particular piece of documentation. So I guess this is mostly commentary on what to do when you're writing documentation and what not to do. You don't want to write your documentation in the mindset that users are going to read 100% of the documentation and memorize all of it. That's just not going to happen. Even if I did read this, which I'm pretty sure I did, I can only vaguely remember certain things that I've read after a few days. And so knowing somewhere in the back of my head there was some weird rule about some objects being deferred on their release doesn't mean I know how to find that information again. And after enough searches of it not coming up, I'm pretty likely to just assume that it must have been about something else. But thankfully, someone points me to the right thing. 
they're familiar enough with all of this. In particular, it's Martin's Mosaica, by the way. When you go and ask on Handmade Network, especially about a topic like uh, API, like D3, D11, it's Martin's Mosaica who's going to give you the pointers you need. So thank you to him. And he pointed out that this piece of documentation does, in fact, explain that for swap chains, you, they will not be released until the next time the device is flushed. If you don't flush, then they defer the release because apparently they can do some optimizations with that. So this has the ability to solve our problem. We can now in a loop create swap chains, release them and flush, and we actually don't get a memory leak. This does sort of raise the issue of, does this mean we have to be done rendering anytime we're about to destroy Windows? And the answer is kind of yes. So moving forward, we have to be careful not to destroy Windows when we're halfway it through the process of rendering something. But I don't think that'll be an issue. Usually when creating and destroying Windows is going to happen at certain events in the application code. And the begin and end render are probably going to be completely contained within a single call that implements the graphic style stuff that we have after a command buffer that's sort of abstracted has been passed to us. We're probably not going to begin a frame with begin render create and destroy windows and then do some rendering and then finally end the render. That's just not the way I think this is going to get organized. So we can just apply the rule moving forward that whenever you're in the D3D mode or just any of like OpenGL mode 2 or anything that has a begin render end render concept, that within that begin render end render, you're not allowed to create and destroy windows anymore. So having done all that, I go ahead and move this solution into the main code base, test it out like I was trying to do last time and confirm that yes, indeed, we have solved this problem. And now we're actually free to move on to the next step of building out this graphic system.